All right, so we gonna talk about class in object oriented programming concept. Okay. So first thing, what is object oriented programming? So we've been learning the basic programming so far since like how to write output hello world how we deal with the data types right that many type of data primitive type int long float double characters what else int long float double characters boolean short Byte, yeah, that's pretty much it. So now those are data types, and then we start to make a condition like we call branching statement, like if else switch case, right? Then we can pretty much be able to read in user input, get the condition, and then print it out, right? read in to store into the right data type so that's why we learn data type and learn how to read input from the user and then we start to make the conditions right and now those are just basic making decision in the program and then we learn how to be able to complete like repetition like iteration we call iteration like loops right be able to repeat things using computer to help it's gonna be faster with for loop while loop and do while right then we can see some example like we want to print number sequence some of the sequence things like that and then we start to see we combine loop and if else and switch case all together to make the application right and we see we have nested loop too if we have to do loop twice or nested if that more than one conditions now we see the primitive data type pretty much just you declare a data or a variables with the data type you can store data like a number it's going to be whole number is integer something like that now when we have a group of data we going to talk about array and I start to introduce you to your little bit, you learn that, right? A group of data that has the same type. So, those are pretty much just the beginning of programming. Now, this is very important that you should understand a concept. Like, we're looking at things in terms of object. So, we call object oriented programming. Everything is an object. Like, programming is, we create an object like just represent the real world object like a class pretty much we know the class already we always declare public class followed by the java file name so that's pretty much a class the same class that we were talking about this is a class that we're going to talk about right so but now what is the class right the class itself in object oriented programming is is represent an object okay and object has relationships like for example a good one is going to be a car a car itself is an object but if you're looking at a car to build a car you need many other objects to make a car like could be uh, the body of the car the tires the engine Steering wheels, brakes, right? Brake. Those are object, right? Brake pads, right? So seats, radios. Those are objects. So if you separate them, they are separate objects. But when you build a car, you just bring all the object together to make a new object. So same thing when you write a program, we create one class. We have more classes, and if you really look at your hello world class, like technically you actually involve what system which is system is a class so if you look at 
that's why naming convention is important look at the name okay look at the name of the class so you start to see when you declare a class you capitalize the class name right that's why I try to tell you the naming convention when you declare a class you should capitalize a class name now whenever you see when you call system dot out system is capitalized so system is technically a class in Java so if you see system Java doc you see it's going to take you to see this is a class too and system pretty much resides in this package java.lang okay like we said system dot how we call the field so this is an object like it's represent the system like the whole system computer system has what input and output standard input and output system so that's an object as a system object right so that's why when you want to build a class hello you pretty much need to deal with another object to make to say hello right so that's why another object is system dot now that system object how you going to just like if you have a car car is an object how you going to drive a car you need to learn how to start an engine how to brakes how to right accelerating same like I know the system how am I going to use the system to print the word hello so system dot refer to the attributes we call field so object composes of key main thing two key are what field and method which field is represent the attributes or characteristics like system has input and output car has four doors car has like sedan sport sport utilities or color of the cars right so those are the field summary or we call characteristics or attributes and the method so method pretty much is the function of it right the function of a system right so method just like in math we call function we have parentheses like that like f of x right we learned the uh, method in 5.1 right so our uh, function so like system you can exit or terminate the current running program just do system dot exit see that that's the, the function of the system or the method you can exit right there's so many methods that you can load, right? Load a code file with a space file file name. You can load, right? System.load. Those are the function of the system. Right, so that means we create a class system to represent an, a system object. And then once we know that every application pretty much needs what input and output, exit to system.exit once it's done, right? Close the program like close that out, it's called system.exit Close the x1 the application and the reason we want to do that, you may see why we want to build a program that way, just like it's easy to reuse them like all the application pretty much needs system like for sure system.exit, right? so that's why we build it once and then we reuse them just like all the cars probably want what wheel so we just want to wheel, build a wheel and then we just use them in all the cars so we just look at building an application in a term of object oriented like thinking in term of object that's what it means right object oriented so thinking as an object now when you start to write a program like design application like example of the car the method could be what brakes or accelerate right so those could be the method of the car so another way to look at is the verb is the method right like copy 
verb is the method, right? And adjectives or noun, those are the attributes of the field summary, right? Like error, that could be adjective, right? And the noun itself could be the object, like the name of the class, system, right? Okay. So now let's look at class exercise. So now, first, we need to understand what is UML diagram, right? UML diagram pretty much just a diagram for our software engineer. Just like if you are a civil engineer, you gonna use a blueprint to lay out the building structure. So we use UML diagram to lay out our programming structure. Okay. The basic UML diagram pretty much just represent the class. Right? So if you look at UML diagram like class diagram. Like this is one of example flight flight like this pretty much just try to decide an application for airline that you can pretty much check the flight or right check the flight you can see so the flight pretty much just represent as a class named flight because the reason we want to make it as a class because they're going to have ton of the flights right flying every day so then how we going to know flight flight should have the field which is field summary flight number right departure time and uh, flight duration so this is a uml diagram like a table with three rows the first row which is the class name the second row is the method summary i mean the field summary just like that class name field summary and method summary right and the third one is the method summary and method is with the parentheses right just like function in math with parentheses now we use colon after the name and give the type right so that is uml diagram syntax like flight number the data type should be an integer departure time the data type should be date flight duration the data type should be minutes okay now we have just learned the primitive data types so you start to see that these are more than just primitive data type like in java you use int int as a primitive type but the type itself could be another class as a type like this is an integer class this is a date class this is a minutes class okay that could be the type now the method has delayed flight so we have to take parameters like we learn method can have parameters so we have to give the type this is primitive type right int int you see when it's a class is all capitalized right and this is primitive type number of minutes so how long it's going to delay right and it's going to return the date back so this is the return type like method can return when it's not returned, we can say void, right? So get arrival time. So that's method to get the arrival time of the flight. Then returns the date. Date, pretty much including date, like month, day, year, and minute and seconds time. Date and time. So that's an example. Like I said, this is 
This is called field summary in Javadoc. So this is Javadoc, right? And the third row is the method summary. Now beside we call field like I said, sometimes we call attributes. So that's why it's list of the attributes for like flight number. Right, so these are the attribute and attribute type. All right, another example is bank account. So this is again, this is a class UML diagram. You just need to draw this table with three rows. First row, the class name bank account. Second row is the field summary. So bank account should have bank account name, which is the owner, and the type should be string. Right, and this is a class again. String is a class, capitalize S. You may have been using already, like you see that you can do dot, right? Dot to uppercase, dot to lowercase. Because it is a class, that's why they have the method that you can just do dot to invoke the method, right? Now we have the balance. This is a class named dollars. Initialize to zero. So bank account should have the name and the balance, the ownership name. And bank account should have the method like to deposit and to withdraw. And passing the parameter amount to deposit and amount to withdraw. Make sense? So that's called bank account. That's an example of bank account. This is flight. So that's pretty much at this point. This is the UML diagram that you should know. You should be able to draw your own UML diagram when you create a class. And now you should understand Javadoc. I just show you, uh, we talk about Javadoc a lot. Right, Javadoc pretty much as a documentation that's explain like what is the class and how to use a class. Like what is what is the fill, right? Each of them, what are those? Like ERR, sometimes people do not know, then we have to read the standard error output stream. Like what's in the standard input stream, what's out the standard output stream. So it's just explain the field definition. If you click on it, it's just going to more details. All right. So that's technically, you see the class, Javadoc has the class told you the package. Like I told you, package pretty much is a folder named Java, another folder named Lang, and put a system inside that folder. Right, that system that Java, after you compile, you get dot class. So that's pretty much just be like made more organized, organizing your files that way with the package. So now, this is pretty much just going to call that, uh, tell you. In 201, after this class, you learn this concept we call inheritance. So pretty much system is inherited from object class. That's another concept of object-oriented programming besides knowing class, class with the fields and methods, right? Then you need to understand that's the next concept, inheritance. Okay. So at this point, you don't have to worry about inheritance yet. Inheritance is like you can reuse the class and make changes to the class. Like you totally can drive your dad's car because it's inherited to you. Okay, but you can also change, make changes a little bit, right, on the way you drive, something like that. But you learn more about that. Okay, that's in 201. So now only focus on understand, yeah, how to read the UML diagram, what is Javadoc, how to read the Javadoc, right, like field summary. And the method summary, same thing, explain all the methods in that class, as well as how to use it like returns type this has no return because of void this has return string so when you clear the property you pass in one parameter string type which is a key to clear 
and return the string back. Now, how to use that? You have to understand, re like, ex read the descriptions. Remove the system properly indicated by the specified key. So you want to learn more. It's pretty much just to say key is the name of the system properly to be removed, right? So, like, like now when you start to read the Java doc, you pretty much understand better how to use the method. Like if a security manager exists, a security manager dot check permission method is called with a property permission key, right? Permission, right? So when you do something with the system, you probably need yeah the right access to modify with the key, right? Something like that. Okay. So that's the point of Java doc, like to explain meaning that when you write in new class your own class you want to like so far you never write your own class you've been using it like string with the method math right like before we do math.absolute right so math.square root this is a class with the method that you've been using it so this you're pretty much going to create your own class like you try to create your own math class just like you you try to create your own method right in the class and you try to use them so you technically want to make sure you can start to draw the UML diagram and be able to create a Java doc. I've been asking you to do Java doc. Maybe remember that with the Java doc comments slash to asterisk, right? And closing with asterisk slash. So that should go on the top of the class level and on the top of each method. In that case, it's going to create this definition for all the methods, right? The descriptions. And at the class level, it's going to create the, the document at the class level right here, right? So that's why Java doc is important. So let me show you one more time. Like for example, when you create Java doc, we use slash asterisk asterisk entered, and then you just explain diamond class right is a class to draw like just explain right to the user make sure this user try to use your class they understand how to use it like the way system or method or string they do and each method here you should have like normally you don't need to like a class itself doesn't have main for the one that you try to reuse it like math class string class right so the one that if it's a main that mean this is a like one application should clearly have one main to run the whole application like the starting of the application right so draw diamond right so you see this is a Java doc that you should put on the top of each methods. Like now I have two methods, right? And then this is where you start to explain what is n, right? Right? And this is really makes sense when you compare back. Like what is key? You need to explain what is key. I read you said do not understand like what is n, right? Like draw the diamond, right? So this is based on our previous class size number of lines, right? To our returns diamond shape, right? So it's going to say return. Yeah, we're going to say the diamond shapes with n lines. Depends on the n, right? Right, draw. So it was the purpose of this method door diamond shapes. Something like that, right? Door a diamond shape. Yeah, it should be just one. A diamond shape. So that's just an example, right? Of how to write Java doc and you could generate it. Right, so with IDE, you can 
like this is IDE for IntelliJ, you can go to tools. After you put the comments for Java doc, you could generate it. You can select the output directory where you want to print it to. Right, so let's say for example if I put on the desktop. on the cc200 class folder so it's going to generate it on that location and return this java doc you may see this is the explanation like this is exactly the same thing that we type at the class level diamond class right so explain what is a diamond class is a class you draw diamond shape and it's method so the method summary here now that's one more thing that you like to see right so like now i don't have the field summary because i didn't create a field field technically just like an attribute like these are the methods right an attribute of the class so like you could just say private and add the attributes like the color of the diamond something like that so that's gonna be string Right, so same, we can just explain the attributes, right? Color of the diamond. Right, so this supervises the field. So let's regenerate again since we make changes. And you can see it's just ask. Let's see, looking for the field. So this is just uh, showing the uh, some warning like the message something to do with yeah this one I never keep description so that's why so arguments main method okay. Let's regenerate every time you make changes. All right, so this is the class. So in the class cell, we have the constructors too. All right, constructor pretty much just a method that has the same name as your class name like a diamond with the parentheses and the point of the constructor is just to give the initial values right like it could be initial color of the diamond right to the object So what I'm going to do, since I declare this as plywood, I'm not going to declare, I'll remove the word plywood out. So when I remove the word plywood out, so the scope of that is going to be a default. Okay. And you learn the modifier concept. Okay more in inheritance concept when we do 201 but at this point when I declare private the color is only valid inside a diamond right so like if I declare private right so outside the diamond cannot access to it you, re you remember like math square root math dot pi so those pretty much they make it non private so that's why you have an access to those so now 
when we make it private, this color is only valid to use inside the diamond. Like you cannot say diamond dot color to access to the color anymore because it's private. Like scope of this variable is only valid to use inside this class. Now let's take a look at the constructor. Like now, you see that but that's one constructor which is an empty parameter named diamond. Okay, so the constructor, this is called a hidden constructor, meaning that you never declared here. By default, you're going to have, if you don't declare a constructor, the program will declare it for you. And this is a constructor without the parameter. Okay, and it's public by default. So you could declare by yourself too by just write the method name that diamond it's just like that okay so it was declared like that for you automatically okay from this compiler so the point of the constructor is it just give you initial values in this case there's no initial values just like empty just make it to make sure that when you create an object it's first called the constructor first create an object from the class name like now for example if I want to initialize the color I could just do color equals to right so that means whenever we create a new diamond object the diamond always going to have red color because the constructor initialized the values to it same thing the constructor should have the java doc too right initialize diamond color to rate so now you see the constructor the description has been added because the changes that I just made because no longer he didn't construct it all right so now let's come back to we understand the Java doc. So you should be able to describe the concept of a Java class and object of a Java class. All right, so let's take a look at this. So the Java class at this point is the diamond. Diamond is a Java class, right? Now, if I want to create an object, it's going to be the same way that you normally do when you create an object let's see how do you create object op scanner if you have a scanner class let me make sure I don't name the same because scanner technically is come from the library, right? A class that's created named scanner. So let's rename the file to scanner demo. So how do I use scanner? Any anyone tell me how to use this? To read in input from the console, right? From the keyboard, right? How do we use it? Okay, we have to import and we have to uh, create an object object that scanner Java class. So this is exactly the highlighted part, right? So how do you create an object? Right. 
that's how you create an object right and you see when I do the name this is called what this part if you can notice this this is a method right the method that has what <coughs> the same name as the class right what do you call that the method that's the same name as the class the method that has the same name as a class constructor you call a constructor to create an object and we just need to import the reason we want to import because this is just a path where scanner.class is located technically right the folders right so now <coughs> the constructor itself doesn't have to have an empty constructor you could make another constructor that has the parameter same like I could set the color this dot color so since I had the same name like color parameters and color as a field right so that's why we use this keywords this actually refer to this class and the color the attributes or the field of that class right equals to color which is the parameters see that's another way to create a constructor instead of always giving the color as initialized to rate you technically can right initialize diamond color to color which is the value that the user passing in right if the user how do the user passing in right there like for example I could use diamond now right see that I create a diamond I can use it like how do I use an object of that class right of Java class an object name diamond equals to new the diamond and if I didn't give the color this diamond is gonna be what color red why if I give the color it's gonna be blue just like you give the parameters value like that right so that's it I create my class I use my class do I need to import since it's in the same folder then I don't have to import if I move it into different folder then yes I have to import like if I move this diamond how do I create a folder for it you could name package because we call package right package edu.nvcc.csc200 so that's how you you just use keyword package and when you do move it, it's going to create a package for you right there. In this case, if you look at the actual physical folder, it's technically me open. It's technically create a subfolder for you, like under stores, edu folder mvc folder and csc200 folder and put a class diamond in there let's just organize the file that way right which if you want to use now there's an error why because you need to tell the package or pretty much just the path right where the class is located right and then the file name is diamond See that that's pretty much the leader import for right so what we have learned we learned how to create our own class and learn how to use it in your new application right by creating an object of that class right so we create object of a class okay we just created three of a class named diamond with a lowercase because Java is case sensitive, right? 
we create a Java class named Diamond, and its methods are like draw diamond, right? So technically, if I want to create this, <coughs> I technically already created. I could complete the application by what system dot out dot print. Like <coughs> the diamond, like I said, that's doesn't make sense to have the main method in here anymore. Like we create a utility class, like a math class, string class, they don't have a main method. So the application that using it pretty much has the main method, just like hello world application that we do, right? So enter number of lines, right? So it's going to prompt user and user is just going to set in n equals to use the keyboard enter user enter the number of lines we read in the integers how many lines right user entered and then we pretty much just try to draw it right how do we draw it we just this is we don't need this because we already have main we just call the diamond right so how do we call the diamond just like like keyboard dot next int we just call the object diamond right there and the method in that draw diamond and with the n that the user enter in so this pretty much is going to draw the diamond shape right because we invoke the method inside the diamond that we have created right here right so let's run this application so it's going to prompt the user to enter okay so let's run from this one because the diamond itself no longer have main class that's why i say that we had to run from the scanner demo enter number of lines six so it's just draw a diamond for me and this is pretty much i can package this as a library right and then whenever the application need to draw a diamond you can just import it to use from this package and that's how you use right same concept that we learned how to use math class string class right but now we create our own class and we use them make sense like and we do it this way then it's technically better you see that I make a library that I can draw any diamond shape with any number of lines that the user specified it right bigger diamond shapes see same code here if you want to loop keep prompting the user to enter in then we can just add the loop in that we have learned right so how do we do that so this first loop has to remain things right initialize condition increment right so initialize pretty much just give the initial value how many times loop is going to repeat in this case I want the application to keep asking the user until the user enters zero to stop so that means terminating is condition has to be while but con continue uh, that's keyword so proceed this is the variables right so we just say in proceed initialize to the value that the user enter actually maybe I should use two or false just do boolean then and we want to from the user to say continue right first time I want to make sure it's going to loop so I initially proceed to true so while plus it is true but right? initialize value right and condition true but increment in this case increment is pretty much just change it to fault the stop right changing the proceed so you're going to say it's proceed then how do we change we have to change inside like i plus plus in here normally right 
so now we got how do we change how do we change this to false we don't know until the user enters so we technically want to prompt the user again then right in this case the scanner we don't have to initialize it again we can bring it outside initialize the scanner outside right um now we want to change the value right we want to make application keep asking user to enter the number of lines keep drawing the diamond until the user said stop right so that means we after we draw the line we have to print the message do you want to print continue right and then we have to read that message in right to set the value of the proceed right okay so the user is going to enter the value how do we read in the value we already have the keyboard right that we declare right here keyboard that with integer is also can read so the user going to enter yes or no right so you have to say enter y or n right so keyboard dot how do we read a value next right next you gonna see you gonna have y or n so this is gonna be how do we initialize that so if right if if next this is a string right so we have to use the method of string equals to so you want to do equal ignore case because user could be enter capitalized y or lowercase y right equal ignore case equals to what y if the user enter y what do we do if you want to use a shortcut that we have learned in the test the if else shortcut assignment operator right then if it is y that means you make it true otherwise false right otherwise you just assign false to proceed so this is called assignment operator right like just like if else statement right the expressions this is like if else expressions so we prompt the user to say do you want to continue you say it's going to y if it's y we say if it's y then it's true process true then it's going to keep prompting if user enter n then it's going to be false or anything else right all right so let's see let's test the application internal of lines now you may see this is the benefit of what using class you don't have to worry about drawing the diamond anymore because you separate into another class that dealing with drawing the diamonds which is the previous assignment right now this one you just focus on how we going to prompt the user right to repeat like prompting the user do you still want to continue yes so now what is yes it's supposed to go back and prompt the user to any number of lines which is didn't do that so we can fix that because when it's go to yes it never have the statement so that's why we have to move the statement inside the loop right so let's try again see we just separate a concern now right separate a concern like we don't have to worry about how to draw diamonds because it's being done now we just worry about how to repeat the loops to from the user do you want to continue yes enter number of lines again now i don't have to it's going to keep repeating i don't have to worry about running my application all the time right if i say why so it's still continuing number of lines 
So store diamond for me. Do you want to continue? Yes. See. If it's All right. So let's keep drawing the diamond, right? Hmm? That's cool. Right, because we said why, okay. Because of the loop, right? So pretty much all the application that you run is actually in the loop, if you notice that. It's just never closed until you hit exit. Every application that you run is in the loop. So do you want to continue and say no? No more. Exit, right? Exit code zero. That's how you exit the program. Just like you close this out. Let's go and call system that exit and keep code zero. So now we create a class. You can see the benefit of creating a class and we create an object from that class that we created and use the method that we created earlier, right? By importing it to use. And we create another application of that class, right? You may see we can start to actually make a simple small game, right? Now, we understand the Java class and its method. Like in this case, our Java class is diamond, and the method is draw diamond shapes, right? So this kind of how parameter works. So parameters in this case, what the end, like it's going to pass to the method draw diamond, like end, and this logic used pretty much just draw the diamond in here, right? Use that in. Now, we talk about assessor yet? No. We didn't talk about mutator yet? No. So, what are those, right? Assessors is another name, is getter, like accessing to get information. Mutator is the one who set, like setter. Set, like, what's that? If you come back to our program here again, so we have a diamond, we have the color. So let's see, these attributes or the fields, we can get the color of the diamond shapes. How do we get, pretty much just create a method we call assessors or getter to return the color. All right, so the method should look like this. Public string, which is the color data type is string. And we say get color. So this is a getter. And what it's going to do is just has to return this dot. Remember, this is referring to the class name diamond dot color. Just like that. So that's why it returns the color of the diamond once it's created. Okay, so now let's test. So I just create a new diamond, right? And this is a color as blue, right? So I technically can, after I draw, I can just tell the diamond color the diamond by accessing the method get color this is called getter right and let's see after we draw it's going to tell the color blue right so that's get color blue right because we created as blue now this is called assessor or getter how about setter? Setter, that means you can also change the diamond color. So instead of get color, now don't forget to put the Java doc, right? So it's just access to the color the diamond and returns the color of diamond. So this is assessors. 
So mutator, pretty much just do set and set we don't need to return. We have the type as void. We set the color. The color need to have a parameters, which is a string type as the color to set like we technically can change right the color of the diamond, right? This refers to diamond dot color equals to the new color. So this is called setter. Okay. So set the color of the diamond. Again, another name is pretty much just mutator, right? Or setter. So diamond color has to pass in as parameter here. So let's test that. So the diamond after we get color, it's blue. We can technically prompt the user to change the color of the diamond. So I say, okay, please enter a new diamond color, right? So the user is going to type the color that we can read in from where keyboard, right? Dot next again. And this one pretty much is going to set to where the diamond has the setter, which is set to the color that the user enter in. Right. So then when we get the color next time, it's going to change the color. But how do we make sure it's going to change? We have to remove the diamond outside of the loop. Otherwise, it's always creating the blue every time. All right, so it's going to change in the next line and this way, new color. All right, so let's try. So the first time it's blue, please enter a new diamond color. Let's say green. Do you want to continue? Yes. Enter number of lines, eight. Now the diamond is green because we we make a setter to change it to green. Even first time we initialize as blue. So that's the point of using set and getters, right? Get to get the color, print out the color, set to make change it to the color. Like if I explain this one more time in the term of UML diagram, the minutes that is going to delay, this is just like you can just set right the time to the parameters for the flight. Or if you look at the bank account, this is like when I deposit, I just set set what set a new balance. That's like setter. Withdraw same. I set a new balance out of withdraw by subtracting. So it's just very similar to set and getters. Okay. All right. So now we talk about constructor already. Let's come back to review the constructor for diamond again. In this case, diamond I have created two constructors. One is the we call default constructor, which has empty parameter which you initial values initialize the value inside another constructor this is a second constructor we have we have two constructors those are the method name right that has the same name other class name the second parameter has a parameter the second constructor has a parameter and this parameter is one parameter just take the color to pretty much initialize the colors to the constructor right this concept we call overloading overloading constructor meaning the constructor has the same name right it's overloaded by two that can be different in the term of parameter passing in and no parameter passing in no parameter passing in the diamond will be red color Otherwise, it's going to be the color that being passing in. 
So this is pretty much a summarize of all the concept in the bullets here that I show you. You can watch more videos that talk about this UML Java doc and class, okay, and show you how to create Java class, just like I show you just now. Now after that, you're going to have the class exercise that you have to write your own code, call a person, and this person has pretty much two two fields, or we call instance variables, which is the name and the age, right? Those are the fields, right? Person has name and age. So now UML diagram. So you, I would recommend you use the. It's like it's free Lucid chart UML. You can sign up and get account for free. Um, they technically have a template for you to use. Okay. So, like this one, I have a UML diagram. Like for bank account. Like now, let me show you like a person that we just talked about. You technically need to draw the UML diagram using this use Lucy chart. So. I'm looking for containers, chips. search here then there you go you can just go to magnifier to search for UML so these are the UML class right there you can just drag and drop so that's a template for you and then you can just replace with a class name like in this class exercise we want to do person and these are the attributes or the fields right in this case we have a now one thing that I didn't explain is the symbols in front. Plus is a public. Minus is a private. Okay. Like the modifiers that we put. And if you don't put anything, it's just like default. Okay. Like just like you never have public or private. Like like this is private, right? Okay. Now for your class exercise is say you have name and age. We didn't tell you you is public or private. And we always want to use private, okay? And the reason is we gotta learn the concept of encapsulation. We want to hit hide the data from the world. So that's why we want to make it private. So this is age and type should be int or short right person sure no one will will be like thousand years old <laughs> so it's just short h name which is string right so you just use the column to separate the type like we see that right okay now it's only two then <clears throat> Let's come back to the question again. Add methods to person class to perform the following task. Now this is a list of the methods, right? Constructors. Initiate values of person object. One without parameters, I shown you that. And another with name and age as parameters. So we can have two parameters, right? So technically you can just put in here right as a constructor and constructor always public right because when you do create object it's always create from the constructor plus public is the plus 
person and constructor doesn't have a type All right so now this is with parameters which is h and again this is going to be name first even the parameters and then the type after the column so two constructors right set the name attributes pretty much just setter right we talk about setter set the age get the name get the age so now let me draw that out so in the UML diagram this technically want to be all public because it's going to be used when you instantiate an object get name right get name will return a string type no parameter need and set set name set name we need a parameters which is name string all right and this is going to be void type because not returning anything <coughs> and the same as what get age right short and set age age short and it also asks you to do one more this is very important to string okay to string method pretty much just a method that returns information about a person like pretty much just like print statement like name and age of the person okay so like in this case i didn't have two string i should have have two string pretty much just returns like public it's always return string two string it's very common that the classes should have two string methods and what we're going to return in this case, it's going to return all the attributes values. In this case, we only have one. Pretty much just going to say, like the string, the diamond color is. Right? If you have more than one attribute, pretty much just concatenate them right here. Right? So, that's pretty much just two string. And normally, two string we like to do annotation overwrite. Why? Like, again, this is inheritance concept. Like, all Java classes, remember I show you system inherited form class, but system inherited form object class. See that? All Java classes, they're all inherited form where, you know? Object like the one that we creating just now or hello world an object has one method which is one of the method is two string we technically override that method when we create our own two string as a subclass so that's a concept so that's why we like to do override the reason it's not required to do that the reason we want to do that because you know why if I happen to misspell to a string, this is also a still valid method, right? But when I put override, it's going to tell me right away that this is wrong. It's going to check the error at compile tab. Method does not overwrite method from the superclass, which is that object. So you know that you have a typo because your intention you want to overwrite. And why we want to do that? Because this is a special method. Like if I want to print information about a diamond, I technically can just say system dot out dot print and call the instant name. I don't have to call the method name. Because it's gonna call that to string for me. Whenever we call the instance name like that. Okay, so that's why two string is important and it's very common to put it in other classes. Let's say purple. 
Yes. The diamond color is purple. See that? Let's go to call two string version that we just created. Now that's why I want you to write a two string. Okay. A two string. Now that two string pretty much is public. Two string with the capitalized S. And it's pretty much just gonna return a string. Pretty much just print the name and the age of the person. Like Mr. David, 16 years old, something like that. <coughs> and that's technically what you need to implement. I just show you the design of UML. Of course, I show you how to create Javadoc. You have to write a code and create Javadoc. Do the same submit on GitHub, right? So that's for the person. Now, another class that you need to create. Person is pretty much just like I create a diamond. But I need to be able to use it because this one doesn't have the main, right? So another class we gonna call a driver class. The driver class pretty much just a class with the main. Just like in this case, I have my driver class as scanner demo, right? With the main that use a diamond, right? That I created here, right? This is a diamond class. So same thing, you're gonna create a second class called person driver. And this is called a driver class, the class that's going to test your person class with the main method, including main method, right? You're going to instantiate two person object. Like in this case, I only instantiate one diamond object, right? I can technically create another object diamond. I can call another diamond. Right, and make different colors. G-R-E-Y, right? <clears throat> so now I have two objects. Same, you're going to create two persons with different name, different edges. And I want you to test if these two objects are equals. Equals mean what? They have the same name and age. You're going to write a program to test that. And write a program to test either whether this two person has the same name, same age, and which one is older, and which one is younger. So pretty much in your program, you just need to do getter setters, right? Getter first to get and do if else to compare, right? If they are equals, like you get age, get name, both of them are equals, then you just say they are equals. And if you compare greater, then one of them will be order and you tell me who is order, right, in your program. <clears throat> or you could just create a method again to do this. Pass two object return two or false. That method name equals. Right. And another method name like compare. Compare to object, right? Compare to returns negative or positive, right? Negative is this, right? younger, positive is this older, right? Because you're gonna subtract them by get age, right? Same age, pretty much equal, we take care. Same name, equal, we take care, right? All right, so the better way to do, I mean, I would recommend to use methods, yeah. And if you want to use methods, like for example, you could create more method like equals in here, just like two string. Remember when I told you in string class, you can do dot equals, right? To compare two, two strings. So that should be the same principle that you should do, like you create public and return true or false, equal. Is it equals or equal? 
Now the object that you compare is no longer string, it's a diamond. Right, object. So what you're gonna do return right this dot. So you're gonna compare what color. Like this is only color, right? Dot equals because this is string type to what object dot. How do you get a color of the object? Get color. So if they are equals, that is true, right? Now in the program that you want to test, like that is the best way to do, right? You create two objects. So we will say if diamond dot equals you technically can just print out right system dot out dot print what do you want to print equals another diamond right so this is going to be true or false So we could just do expressions again, boolean expressions to print just a statement string like output equals to So we gotta say if it's true then we gotta say object uh to two objects are the same, right? Else was false. That mean two objects are different. Okay, just a statement. After you compare and it's print the output for me if they are the same or not. So that's pretty much an example of you could do that, right? Two objects are different. Right. For the cloud exercises here, if they are equals or not, by creating method equals, right? Okay, so you can apply that principle for the rest. And this is should do like for the numbers you can do compare to. Just like in string they have compare to. Like like letter A and B, right? B greater than A. So use the same principle, right? Compare to in that class. <coughs> Alright, so that's pretty much it for five point two. So next class we'll come back and look at five point three. So try to spend more time on this one, like I said, it's very important. This is a very important topic, okay?